You'll be wondering why we're still on the mooring ball and not gone to the anchorage. Um, it's because uh, Beverly um, couldn't find who to make the check uh, for the honesty box here uh, payable to. So we went online only to find that the mooring balls are free. Also, uh, one of our YouTube subscribers also dropped a note on one of the YouTube comments. Oh, that the mooring balls are free. So, um, yeah, if they're free, why not just relax, know that you've got good tackle underneath of you, and, um, yeah, happy days. I take a half an hour to an hour to prep the boat for a move, 15 well, minutes to move it, then another hour cleaning up after yourself to move. 300 yards yeah that was the thing because we were at the mooring and then as Beverly says we'd have taken an hour at least just to go oh not very far I can actually see where we'd have ended up and we just decided you know what I think the word lays just came <laughs> so that's what we've been doing here in uh, Millport the word lazy lazy and even more lazy left Millport and um, I'm glad to say I feel like I have now done my navigating and sailing in a narrow channel tick off the list because um, just um, by Millport is Little Cumbrae and there's a little channel there and I was tacking it beautifully so I feel that we have actually, I've done that whereas I had hoped to do it um, down the Kyles but because uh, I had the engine on I just didn't class that as sail in a narrow channel which is one of the things on the Yacht Master. And where are we going? Uh, we're going to go back to Holy Island um, and Lamlash. Uh, we're doing a staggering, um, let me just check. Sorry. They were doing a staggering 3.2 knots, but the engine is off, our sails are beautifully trimmed, I have to say. We're getting quite good on the downwind, say, up, oh, um, the close oh, hold you down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. at the moment is there's a fishing boat uh, that's very close to us and um, I'm never too sure about how many what the lines are behind us behind him I mean uh, so what we've done is uh, we've tacked away from him because we were on a collision course and he hasn't got any AIS we can't contact him we've contacted him on the radio not answering so we've tacked away and we've put the engine on purely because it gives us more options. Um, when, when we've got a situation like this, having extra options just feels you've got more choice. Um, but tacking away from him is definitely the number one thing we had to do. Okay, I see the engine's off again. Yeah, well, um, we just put the engine on just because uh, we needed extra options. And we're now sailing again uh, and uh, going in the direction, which does mean that he is back on our nose. But because we're sailing at 2.9 knots, which is not an awful lot really, um, I reckon this time we'll be behind him. 
but hopefully because I don't just don't know how much of a because I can see it's trading lines they, they don't have an advert saying 50 meters or whatever but I know I'll leave a heck of a distance because why not um, we should be behind him now and, and, and out of the trailing lines but that's always my fear is how close can you go well Julia looks very nice over there in the sunshine doesn't it it looks beautiful and um, we're at um, the morning balls at lamb lash and these ones don't have pickups so what you need to have on board is something like a, a Mr. Swifty um, because that just does a perfect job for sorting that hose out. So are you happy? Well fed? Oh absolutely, I've just had tea so I'm definitely well fed. Calm, relaxed and yeah, what's not to like? We've set off again from Lamb Lash, which you might be able to see behind me, and we're heading for Stranor. And whoa, I only tilted over about 10 or 12 degrees, but it feels like about 45. <laughs> um, the biggest possible thing on our passage plan today is the fact that our GPS might switch off. The military are conducting all sorts of exercises in the area, and GPS jamming is part of what they're doing. And there's a frigate over that way, a British frigate. And we know the direction we're going of Stranar, that that's where the jammer is because we've received a notification that GPS may be affected. So it may be compass and chart navigation sometime today, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, today we had felt like Mediterranean weather. We were relaxing, reading, drinking tea, and eating biscuits, and then just changed just like that. This is not the forecast. Um, if you look at the sun, you will see there's a halo round it, and that is a sign of an approaching front, uh, which usually means bad weather. Uh, also, the sea just kicked up tremendously, and we find ourselves going from. Um, sailing with full sails to having two reefs in the main very very quickly to um, actually turning and running before this. We now have a following sea in our hands and um, so unfortunately the following sea is coming from the direction we wanted to go so we're now going backwards effectively. We're going back up the Clyde to Troon and we're going to go in there because if this is right and this is an approaching warm front um, we've got all the symptoms. We've got ring around the sun, we've got high level sheet of cloud, um, we've got the wind has um, veered round to the west, the wind has increased in strength, these are all the symptoms of an approaching front and it just probably means that the weather's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. So we're running for Troon 10 miles away, it's the nearest port of refuge because we can't get into Gervin. Um, Gervin has a tidal gate on it and we can't get through it at this point so Troon it is, much as, it's, much as I don't want to go there. It's the wrong direction. I want to go that way. They're going that way.
Okay, so we're still in train. We should have left an hour or two ago. Why aren't we sailing? Well, the uh, home front um, that we saw has arrived. It has arrived later than we thought, but it's mainly because um, sometimes the, the fronts are just take longer. Um, obviously, ours was a little bit longer on the front line, but it is what it is. But anyway, we've got the rain and I realised that I am absolutely exhausted. Um, I watched uh, TV and I have to say, I watched TV till stupid o'clock just because I had electric. And I just think after a tiring day at sea, I've been running around like a headless chicken today, sorting out various bits and bobs. And I'm just exhausted and I've got to admit that. Just, uh... All right, well, we'll hold the interview there, as they say in police video things, because my toast has just popped up. <laughs> and it's more important that I butter my toast and eat it. Absolutely, girl. <laughs>